Hi, welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. I'm Jeff Phillips. In this video we'll be looking at producing a scatter graph much like the one I've got here. I've since discovered a quicker way of producing a grid than the one there. So I'm going to go across here and show you. Under extensions you can find render and then grids and select Cartesian grid. You can have a look at the settings that I've got here. The thing to note is that many of these settings are 1 or 0 because I don't want minor and major lines, I just want a simple grid which is ultimately going to be a centimetre grid. So I'll just pause so you can have a look at that and take note. Or you can pause the video anyway I guess. If I click live preview you should be able to see that on screen. Uh, well actually I have changed something, that's not what I want. I think I changed the major X divisions to 1, it should have been 10. It doesn't update till you click in another box. If I do that, now you can see, yes, that's the sort of thing I want. So I'll click apply and close and there I have my grid. Next thing I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, before I place numbers on the grid for example, I'm going to select the lot and I'm going to, I've already got the lock set here, you can lock the proportions. I'm going to change the width to 100 and click enter and you'll see the height automatically adjusts to 100. I'll click off and the reason for that is that I want to put numbers on the grid and I want to move them evenly to line up with each grid line and knowing that these are 10 millimeters apart makes that easier as you'll see in a minute. If I click on the text tool and anywhere just type a zero Zero is a good uh, figure because it's got some width and height about it. So if zero will fit somewhere, so will any other digit. If I just control mouse wheel to zoom in a bit, that's far too big obviously to put on the major lines. So if I control shift, perhaps something like that, and line up. You can use the arrow keys for finer movement depending on what your settings are. I think that's probably about right and I'll mouse wheel down. Now I'll select that zero and under the transform menu, control shift M if you haven't got that, I'm going to change the horizontal movement to 10 and the vertical to zero if it need not already zero. I'll control D to duplicate that zero then I'll apply that translation, control D apply and so on, control D apply, work my way right across and click off. I will, before I do the vertical axis, I might just click the text tool here and type over, change that to 1 and so on. Once I've done this I'll be able to copy it and save a bit of time when I do the vertical axis numbers. 8, 9 and finally 10 you notice the 10 went, uh, is not centered on the final grid line, so you might want to zoom in, click on it, control to keep it vertical or horizontal in this case. It's better, control mouse wheel out. And there we go. Go in a bit. Now if I drag a marquee around those numbers and control G to group them, control D to duplicate, then drag the duplicate off, click on part of the group, you see the rotation handles, you must pick a corner one, hold down control to go 15 degree implement increments and line that up somewhere there. You can zoom in again but that looks pretty good. Okay, so I've got my axis numbers, now I need axis labels, again the text tool and I'll just type axis title and that looks a bit big so grab a corner control shift to whatever size obviously five is in the middle so I can do it by eye or I could use my line and distribute tools but I'll just use eye here again click on that title control D drag it over here click on it again control hand uh, rotation handle control until it's vertical 
and somewhere there. I might want a, an axis, uh, sorry, a graph title, control D to duplicate. And I'll scroll up here. I might make this one a bit bigger since it's the title. Control shift to drag. And there we have it. Now I might group all that together. And I'll do that by dragging a marquee around everything. Control G to group. Control shift G to ungroup if you need to get at things later. Now I'm going to draw the points on the graph. I'll click the circle ellipses tool and drag a point. It looks a bit big but don't worry for the moment. The fill I'll make red. I'll shift click on the red cross to have no border. Now you notice that's not red, it's pink. Well, even though I selected red, if I look at the fill and stroke, control shift F, you see the opacity is down to about 50%. So I can click once you get up to the end, if you need to, just use the little arrows. You get to 100%. And there's the red dot. If I just drag it down into the grid there and then zoom in, and I'll control shift, you might want it about that big. I'll see how that looks by zooming out again. Yeah, perhaps a bit bigger. Click on it, control shift, mouse wheel down. That doesn't look too bad, so I might stick with that. But when I plot scatter graphs, many of these values are going to want to be on grid lines or grid intersections. You don't have to, you can do it by eye and zoom in to get it pretty good anyway. But if I click on my snapping tools up here and turn them on, you can see the ones that are highlighted. And this one here I think is snap, no that's snap midpoints. I'll snap uh, to grids there. And also snap to object centres. I want the, the centre of the red dot to snap to grid lines, so it's important that one's on and that one's on. Now if I zoom in and I'll grab that dot and see if I can snap it. You can see the cross appears, so I'll let go there. Control D to duplicate, and you can see when they're centered. You can mouse wheel, hold the mouse wheel down and pan with the mouse. Control D, there we go. Control D, I'm just doing random points here. Control D to duplicate each time. Control D, and drag. Control D, drag, Control D, yep, Control D, and there, and mouse wheel to zoom out. And that's a pretty uh, good size for the dots, I think. If you'd like a line of best fit or um, something like representing a linear function, you can click on the Bezier Pen tool. I've clicked to snap to a grid line or the, the edge of the grid. That's not a bad thing, I guess, in this instance. Click and see it snapping to grid lines. I might not want that. So you can go up and turn off all snapping tools and then come back. And I might just put it somewhere there. Double click. Select tool, control to zoom in there just to make sure I haven't protruded past the border of the graph, which I haven't. And over here, now that's okay. Looks a bit thin for a line, so I'm going to click on the line and change its width to, I'll try 0.6. That's not too bad. And I'm going to change the colour of the line to navy by shift clicking the navy colour and you can see there's a reasonable graph. On the other graph I highlighted different points by drawing ellipses just in case you wanted to do that. I'll show you quickly. I won't do three groups like this one. I'll just show you how to produce one. Click on the ellipse tool. Just click and drag to... We can alter the ellipse later so don't worry too much. I might change the fill to yellow. The border is still on the blue from before, I might leave that. But on the fill, up in the fill and stroke toolbox, I'm going to change the, you can change the alpha channel or the loom, the opacity, they seem to do a similar thing, but I'll try this one, just click the arrow halfway, produce 50% luminosity, and it might be these three points 
that I wanted to highlight. So I just increase the. It's going to end up being pretty circular anyway, I think. So say I wanted to highlight those three points, but that sort of dulls the points because it's on top. So I can click on the ellipse and send it backwards one uh, layer, and then again, again, and again. It's on top of the grid. I'll see what happens if I do one more. You might prefer that, but you can play around with positioning. Okay, if I pan across just to compare it to our other graph, that looks pretty similar. Oh, yeah, one thing that you might have noticed that the other graph had was arrows on here. Not really sure whether it needs arrows, but uh, if you do want arrows, there are a couple of things you can do. You can break apart this square border into line segments and make, put arrows in the end of some of them, then rejoin where you want to. That's probably a bit fiddly. I'd probably just click on the Bezier Pen Tool, Control click to, to draw and enter to draw a short, sorry, click, control, drag, click and enter to make a short line segment. That's thin but I want it thinner than the overall border anyway so that's okay. If I click on that then go to the stroke style and under the end arrows I'll try that one. Yeah, that looks a good size. You can, again you can play around with that. If I did thicken up the stroke, I'll just show what happens, that the arrow head thickens up as well. So <coughs> you can use that if you need to, but you don't want to go thicker than the border, of course. Now if I drag up here, you can probably just do this by eye and zoom in. I can put an arrow. It doesn't look great, but when you zoom out it's not too bad. I'll just control C to copy that, and then I'll zoom out again. And I'll put one on the other axis. I'll just click, and where you click is where the paste occurs. Click once more to turn this into a, vertic into a rotation handle. Control, rotate, or then move it over to somewhere here. Oops, zoom in, and you can play again. Play around with that. Do you think you've got it right? I think that's probably okay. Click off, zoom out. Certainly when you zoom back into normal viewing you can't see any errors there and that looks pretty good. That completes this tutorial and once again thanks for watching.